Can we make a juicy brisket on a Weber kettle? Let's find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host as always, Captain Ron. Today we're gonna try something really cool and we're gonna experiment together. That's right, you, me, and everybody else that's watching too. So what we're gonna do is we get this brisket flat here, okay? Got a beautiful fat cap on it. But what I wanna find out is can we make a brisket flat really good on a Weber kettle? We're gonna use this snake method. We're gonna wrap it. We're gonna do the foil boat method. But I watched Jeremy Yoder from Mad Scientist Barbecue do something totally different with his in the foil boat method. We're gonna try that out too. So we're gonna try all kinds of new stuff together today. I wanted to go with a brisket flat today because what we wanna try and do is we wanna try and find how to make a juicy brisket. Now, a brisket flat, a lot of times when you cook it, was gonna turn out a little drier. The point is the fattier, kind of more juicy end of it. So I wanted to start with a flat, but I wanted to do everything I can to try and make this juicy. So like I said, we're gonna do it in a foil boat. Then we're going to wrap it in butcher paper too. It's gonna to be a combination of the best of both worlds. So hopefully we'll come out with a nice juicy brisket. We will find out together. What we're gonna do is we're gonna trim all of this excess fat and silver skin right off the top. We wanna to make a nice clean top side. And on the back, let's check out the fat cap. The fat cap looks beautiful. You want it about a quarter inch and that's what it disappears to be the whole way across it. So we're gonna leave the backside just the way it is and only work on the top. Now, one of the nice things about trimming up a flat is there's not a lot of trimming to do, as opposed to when you're trimming a packer brisket, it's only a little tiny bit of trimming to do, but don't forget, save this, it's good for tallow, it's good for going in sausage, it's got tons of uses for you to use too. Now it's time that we season our brisket. Season, it's actually coming into fall and winter, we're outside cooking, it's so nice down here in South Florida, it's not 190 degrees, no, it's like 80 degrees, beautiful grilling weather. But we're gonna season this thing up. The one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna similar, do it the same way that we always do our regular brisket. I've got a 50-50 mixture, of kosher salt and coarse ground black pepper. It's kind of like a butcher's blend. Um, so what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna load it up onto the brisket and season it the same way that we always would. Just gonna sprinkle it right on, no binder, no anything, and give it a nice good coating. The thing different I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic salt in. I just love the flavor that garlic gives the brisket. One of the great things about the snake method is that it doesn't use a ton of charcoal. So I had this open bag of briquettes ready from last time. So we're just gonna take our plates, we're gonna do a two by two. So we're just gonna put two and then lean in the next ones up against them. And you kind of probably know how to build a snake already, but we just continue it around. And we're gonna go probably about halfway around the grill. There we go. And today we're gonna light it up with the chimney. Last time we used the blazer ball. Today I'm gonna show you how to use a charcoal chimney. And for those of you that don't know, this is a charcoal chimney. We're gonna take five coals, drop them in and set them on the grill. This is pretty cool. We got the fire starters going. We got six briquettes in the chimney right here. They're already starting to get up. They're gonna get nice and hot. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pour them on the very beginning of our snake, the head of the snake, if you will. Once that happens, it's gonna catch, we're gonna put some smoking blocks on there. This is gonna work absolutely wonderful. I'm so excited for a brisket flat on the Weber kettle. I can't wait to bite into it. So we're gonna put the chunks right at the beginning because I wanna load this brisket flat up with smoke right away. So those are pretty good size. I'm gonna put three of them right there. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your Weber kettle and open the vents all the way while we're lighting our charcoal, okay? So we have the three vents there that are wide open. We wanna build our heat. Now we can put our grate back in here and prepare for cooking. So we're all lit up. We're gonna close the dome here now, open up our vents. We'll let this thing heat up. We wanna get it around 275. That's kinda of where, where I wanna cook this. I'll even go to 300 on this thing. I'm not too worried about it. I think it's gonna really create a nice thing. Once that we have the meat in there, we're gonna put the vents opposite the meat. So we'll just wait to get the temperature before we put our brisket on. All righty, let's see. Up, oh, we're right at 250 degrees. Time to put our meat on. So you can see what I was talking about here before. It's created like a nice paste. It's really moistened on here. So we're just gonna pop open the lid and put the brisket on the opposite side of our fire. And that's all we have to do. We're going fat cap up in this baby. We're going fat cap up. So we're gonna have that melting, nice fat rendering down around the base. Uh, this is gonna be fantastic. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my meter thermometer to monitor the temperatures here. We got it through the fat cap. I'm gonna get us at the point is right in the middle of the meat. That's how it's gonna do it. This is gonna give us our ambient temperature and it's gonna tell us our internal temperature of the meat. All right, kids. Well, we're about three hours in here on our brisket and it's looking beautiful. It doesn't have quite as dark a bark as I would like, but our temperature is up around 169, so I wanna put this in the wrap, because that's where we're supposed to do it, all right? And it's looking good, so but the only thing I'm gonna do different, we're gonna use butcher paper, okay? Now, normally in a foil boat brisket, I leave the top open. Now, like I said, I saw Jeremy Yoder from um, Mad Scientist Barbecue do this, and his brisket turned out amazing. So, 
we're giving this a whirl. All I'm gonna do to the paper, I'm gonna put a little bit of Wagyu tallow, okay? We have this Wagyu tallow. I'm gonna put it right down, where I, right where I'm gonna put the brisket on there. All right, it's supposed to make the paper more pliable. It's supposed to just make it, make it, uh, make that brisket just cook a little better. It's got some extra fat in there for flavor. So we're just gonna smear that on there, a good smear. Oh yeah, look at that, beautiful. Again, like I said, the bark is not quite as dark as I would like to on the fat side. But if you look at the bottom, ooh, that looks beautiful, doesn't it? So we're just gonna take it and set it right in the middle of our butcher paper. So all we wanna do now is just give it a good solid wrap. So I'm gonna give it one fold this way, cover it up. I'm gonna go one fold this way, make sure it's folded all the way down. I like to crease my paper so that it stays folded, just like that, okay? Now we're gonna give a fold over the bottom once more. And there we have our brisket ready to go back on the grill. All right, all right, I jumped the gun a little bit. I forgot we were doing a foil boat. We get so into this, I'm so used to doing it that way. This is real simple. One sheet of aluminum foil, all right? We're gonna place our beautiful brisket right in there. And all you do is just crunch up the foil right up around it. Bring it right up to the absolute sides. We wanna insulate it real well. And all we're doing here is you know, when I did the foil boat before, again, I left this top open, so we're gonna see the difference. But what this is doing, we're protecting the bottom of the brisket, we're keeping the juices really in there because the paper will actually allow some of the juices to escape. This is gonna keep those juices there. So, there we go, across from the fire. Make sure our vents are across from the fire. Now we just let it go again until we hit our desired temperature right around the 203 mark. We're gonna start checking at about 195. All right, kids, boys and girls in barbecue land out there, we are at the five and a half hour mark, but more importantly, is that our meter is showing that we are at 203 degrees. Now I took a probe, just like this, and probed it and it is tender, tender as can be. So it's time to do our next step. We're gonna pull this off of here, being careful not to pierce anything, okay? I'm gonna put it right in this pan. Now the reason I'm putting it in a pan is that we are going to put it into a cooler, all right, or a cambro. What we're gonna do is set it in here, and I didn't wanna make a mess inside my Cambro or my cooler, so once we put it in here, we can now set it in and not have a giant mess form in the bottom. All we do, take this like this, simply put it in. You can put towels in there if you want. If you have a cooler, use some towels. If not, just do this, okay? Minimum, minimum, one hour. One hour minimum. If you can do longer, great, do it four or five hours. It's still gonna maintain temperature, I promise you, but the longer you can rest it, the better your brisket is going to be. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we have reached that time where our brisket has rested long enough. We can pull it out of our cooler slash camber, pull it all that steam, and see what we've got. So, we're gonna pull it out of here. Okay, get rid of this. Now, when I was probing it, when I had it in here, the last thing I did, I popped the aluminum foil on the bottom, but why don't I lift this out? Look how much juices are in there. All of those juices all stayed in there to help this meat cook. That's the idea of the aluminum foil, okay? The paper's gonna disperse the juices. It's gonna still keep some in, but it's gonna really absorb and let a lot of the juices out. But what happens now is that once we cook it like this and we have the aluminum foil, it keeps all those juices and it just helps it. Now look how beautiful that is. Goodness gracious me. See this big old smile? You know what this smile is for? Because I love it when a plan comes together. Let's see. It looks good. It smells good. It cut good. It bend good. One last thing to do. It even breaks good. Ooh, that, my friends, is one tasty, tender brisket right there. And juicy, too. Oh, my God. Beautiful smoke ring. I mean, look at that gorgeous smoke ring. Beautiful bark on it. The thing is just, I mean... Come on, please, it's a break dancer, baby. So anyway, guys, that's foil boat brisket with a paper wrap. Kind of crazy, I know, but um, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty well convinced this is a really good method to do it. Have you ever tried this? Have you ever even seen it? I don't know, I haven't. This, that, when I saw him do that, that was the first time I saw it. It kind of intrigued me. So, you know, this is what I love. I love, I even check out other channels. I wanna see what everybody else is doing. I wanna learn, I wanna keep learning. I hope that you wanna keep learning too. I hope you are learning through our, through our videos here. So, as always, if you saw anything that we used in the video here that you liked and you want to have more questions about, maybe you want to have for yourself, there's always a link below in the description, as well as a full recipe and a blog about what we did here. 
So if you have any more questions, you want to know anything, you can always look there or leave us a comment below. We love it. Remember to subscribe if you like what you saw here. We want to have you as part of our FOGO family, all right? Come join us. Anyway, that's all I've got for right now. Foil boat brisket on the Weber kettle, work like a champion. So remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life. Captain Ron, out.